is to uh, achieve this automation, achieve this communication for a very low price uh, because people still have to buy cars. Right, so in the, in the US, we always have a rule of thumb that says you can't add one feature if it costs more than $1,000. Right, so if, if uh, all these radio communications and onboard processing cost more than $1,000, then people probably won't buy those vehicles. So that's roughly the amount that we shoot for is around that, that amount. So there's, uh, if I understand you correctly, uh, with the low pressure in the tubes and the vacuum, uh, it's the transportation concept of what, what's called the hyperloop, right? And this is something that Elon Musk uh, conceived, and it's been thought of before, but the idea is to have just like where you have these tubes that travel in these low vacuum environments and go really fast, you know, maybe a thousand kilometers per hour. Uh, and so they've studied it in theory and, and looked at California going all the way from Los Angeles up to the San Francisco area. But there's, the problems are the curves, right? Because you have a lot of G's when you, when you basically go around those curves. But the concept's been put out there. There's been some simulation, but no test trials yet. But people are thinking about doing that. So the uh, hot topics right now in intelligent transportation systems are connected vehicles and automated vehicles. So vehicles that can drive by themselves. So both of our research labs have been exploring the different types of automated vehicles and all the steps that we need to take uh, before we can have automated vehicles on the road. Crux of, of the connected vehicle program, right? So connected vehicle simply means that you're now employing high degree of communications with the vehicles themselves. Um, and so though, even though we have these big advances in communication bandwidth and capabilities, we still have a lot of data that we need to gather and to process and to share with other vehicles. So even things like when you have vehicles traveling down the road, they can send out basic safety messages. And even that is a tremendous amount of data to receive, interpret, and then process to, to do something with that. So even though we have high bandwidth, we're still sort of uh, working harder on, on the processing capability and being able to process things in real time. So there's still a lot of challenges left with, with not just the communication, but the uh, computation.